Please. Welcome back to the next part of this Truth and Rhythm episode. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. If you've already done so, please share it with friends. Also become a member by joining Truth and Rhythm on Patreon or consider donating at funkinstuff.net. Thank you so much for your interest and support. Enjoy. Hey, before we get started with today's show, I just want to draw your attention to new merchandise. Funk and Stuff and Truth and Rhythm designs are in, and they look pretty darn cool. So show your support, help support the program, and show off some stylish merchandise and apparel. Only at the Funk and Stuff store. Before we get off of uh, Jim O'Kane, uh, is there a particular track you remember, one or two tracks with Jim O'Kane that are like your favorites? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, what's it one for? Um, <laughs> can't let go. Can't let go. And a girl pulled the dog. Left oh, yeah. behind another yeah. dog while I was out back. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, Crack Kill Applejack. Yeah, that one too. Yeah, that's a slamming one for sure. Yeah. Um, and he even redid, uh, didn't he redo Flashlight at one point? Yeah, yeah, with General Kane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So what what was, was uh, George sort of an idol of his or? Yeah, he or... was. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, <laughs> he called it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mitchell was a George fan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did did you were you still in touch with him at all when uh, he uh, had that misfortune? Uh, yeah, I wasn't just, when, when 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 Mitch died when he passed away. Uh, I was in Albany. My wife we were living in Albany, and I got the phone call as soon as I got home from church. But my boy Nelson he flew out there, and I yeah I stay in touch with the family and so I just, I touch, just talked to his son Caesar a couple like last month I talked to them and his other son Mario. They're talking about um, what they want to do a General Kane reunion. But so what? But his mom, Mitch's mom, just passed away. Got rest of soul last month. So that's trying. They trying to put a try to put a hole on that. You know what I mean? So, but if they want to do something like that, me and my friend Nelson, we we down to do it with him. I don't know if you know Steve Buckley. I've heard the name. Yeah, Steve Buckley. He was with Motown and stuff. And um, yeah, he's he's like going to help put it, try and put the um, little project together to do for Mitch because there was some other stuff Mitch had to get ready to come out that didn't even get released yet. Oh wow! Yeah, some hot stuff too. Yeah, I'm sure most of the stuff he did was hot. Um, yeah, <laughs> always brought the funk. You know, he's one of those cats. You know, he kept it real as far as the funk goes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it was real. Yeah, yeah. And he he was a multi instrumentalist though, right? He played more than bass, didn't he? He played bass and he. he he played he played around with a lot of stuff. He played bass, but he did he played excellent drum track. He played and he wasn't a drummer, but he, he played excellent drum track. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's true. He he held it right there in the pocket. Yep. <laughs> he had the feel. Yeah. Yep. But as as far as the ideas and coming up with stuff, he was genius. Mitch was really good. Yeah. He was good. Um yeah. Well, he, uh, just so the viewers know, he ran into foul play. I mean, was he murdered? Is that what happened? Or No, they have Mitch, um, real sure. Mitch had a bell. He had a bell's bottle. Mitch liked to work. He liked to make money. And he had a, a bell's bottle thing. 
And he, uh, um, people, was, was me, and, me and my boy Nelson, we would go out there to California, Mitch State and San Bernardino, well, really Rialto, in Rialto, and he had this bell bottom thing. When he would go to bail somebody out, they would call him, we'd get up in the morning, go down to the bell bottom place and he'd bail them out. Me and Nelson would go. But this one time we flew back home, we came back home. And some Iranian guys called him and wanted to bail somebody out of jail. Mitch goes down to the bell them out and they wanted to give him the pink slip. This true story. Gave him the pink slip. Mitch said he couldn't take the pink slip. They left. And when they came back, they came back shooting. They came back shooting. His nephew was in the back room. He came out and they shot him up too and killed him. That's how that's how Mitch died. Doing his job working. Yeah. Wow. God. Yeah, I, I seem to remember. I mean, it wasn't that uh, too many years uh, removed from when uh, Roger, uh, you know. Yeah, that was sad, right? Yeah, of course, very sad. Yeah. Um, did you know? Did you ever meet Roger? No, never met him. Never, never. We, the General Kane, was just about to do a, um, we were just about to do a tour with them because we had just came home do it. We did a tour in San, I think, it was San Diego with Dad's band. And we were just getting ready to do something to hook up the thing to go out with uh, uh, Robin. Was that? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I think uh, didn't help General Kane was at least once, if not twice, he changed the spelling of his, of the name. You know, I know like at first it was C A I N E, like cocaine, and then it was K A. -N -E. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do, yeah. do you know? Do you know if did he change that because he was afraid of the drug reference to cocaine or what happened? I think that was a, a motel call. Uh, I think that, I think, I don't know who was motel. I think it was a record record company call. Okay. You know, they changed they changed the letter. Yeah. I think I think you know what I'm saying. I don't know if it was record. That's my that's me. I think it was a record company. It might have been but I think it was record. Company. <laughs> but on the on the what the girls album is spelled with the C, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. That's when it was. Yeah, the original. The yeah. original yeah. yeah. I actually have. Yeah. I'm not sure if this. I had this down here too. This was before your time, I think. But this was one of his early ones. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what. That's what. Yeah, that's before I me. Mean, yeah. 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 But actually, it's a good picture of him on the back. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Space Cadets, how did that project come to be? Bernie, <laughs> Bernie, he came home and he, he said, uh, what did he say? He said he had a friend in New York named Nairobi. He was doing something that I want to do it. I was like, yeah. We go to New York and I and I meet um, Nairobi. And again, right back at it again. I just love the people I meet because they're they so real. And that's what happened. That's what happened. Next thing you know, I'm back and forth in New York with um, Bernie and I, Ruby. We cut and then Jesse Ray. Jesse Ray from Scotland. Yeah, it was fun. And uh, it was fun because I got to meet Fonda Ray and her boyfriend, uh, Freddie, play bass on the album. It was, it was fun. It was good. But yeah, that came out. I got that gig with Bernie. Bernie, you know. And I still talk to Nairobi to this day. And, 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 and Tyrone Lampkin from uh, Parliament 2 was on there, right? Yeah, I forgot about Ty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, why, why do you think that project didn't get more exposure? Any idea? No, I have no, no, no idea. I know, I know everybody was doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? I was, at that time, I was still, at Quasar, I had just, just bad, and I was putting together, um, I had a band called Sweat. I was putting together, getting ready to do something for, I'm at Erdic, not, I'm at Erdic, uh, Atlantic Records, anyway. Atlantic Records. Bernie's still doing this thing with George and Jesse Ray. He going back to Scotland. I don't know. It was. I think Nairobi just wanted to put an album out. Because I don't think we never did a show. I no never shows. Did one. Not even a, uh, a, a a promotional party, a showcase. Yeah, a showcase. You didn't do even a showcase. No. Hmm. Uh. Uh. Well, that didn't help. I'm sure. <laughs> and i remember coming across it you know the only reason i have is because well i was a dj for many years so i would get all the records that came out as a disc okay. jockey but um i would also spend most of my free time you know flipping through record crates and record uh bins
hold it. Another project, there's Bernie, you know, there's Ty and and Kevin Goins too. And what is this, you know? And uh, so anything I found back then that had anyone related to P-Funk, I would just buy it. I didn't have to hear it, you know? So, uh, and, and the uh, artwork was a little bit like P-Funk. It was like animated, you know, sort of a little bit like... Um, that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, everybody was a clone back then, huh? Yeah, it was a real cartoony kind of look to the artwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how'd you feel about the uh, content on that record? What do you mean? The songs. How'd you feel about how it came out? Oh, yeah, I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. You know, really, I liked it about because most of the album, most of the space that that album was cut in Nairobi's apartment in new york and that was fun you know you, i mean that was really fun to see just to see how it was coming out right there in that apartment that was really fun then a lot of the, the rest of it was on 122nd street i believe at vanguard vanguard studio yeah that's how that's where i met uh jesse i mean fonda red and uh, freddie and, and did a lot of work we did that song i wrote uh, uh i love, 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 love what you're doing to me that one that's on that album we did that at that studio down there yeah, that was fun. It was fun. Every, you know, every I had no complaints about anybody I worked with because it was just fun and it was real about it, you know. It so, was real. what were you mostly doing in between um, General Kane and P Theory? Playing in church. Playing in church, yeah. <laughs> like I'm doing now, I play, with a, I play with a gospel group right now called the uh, Singing Pastors and stuff. And they they had a record label. They was um, last year they was nominated for the um, what's that Stellar Award? They was nominated for Stellar Award. Oh. And so I'm playing with them right now. That's what I do. So. All right. And and how did you connect with P Theory? P Theory, how did how did that happen? <laughs> um, that's funny. I, don't, I that's funny. Oh, my manager Barbara Barbara Thomas. She knows them, and I think she told them about me and stuff. And she told Alex. Alex called me, and uh, um, <laughs> first thing Alex said to me, and he called me on the phone. I said, "Hello, what's up, man?" He said, "What's up, ML? We was friends ever since." <laughs> well, was, if I had if I had known, I would have greeted you like that today. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got each other. We got work to do. I'm trying to hold the phone. You trying to edit? <laughs> we, we good. <laughs> Oh wow, wow, yeah, from the hood to the woods. That's yeah, that was that was that's that was fun. They planted a tree for me over there. <laughs> that was a fun hour. We was in Wells. That was fun. I said how long I stayed over there about a month doing that. Oh. Mm. I remember I found out about this one because of uh the funkstore.com. And, oh, okay. uh, and I think that's how I found out about this one, pretty sure. And I was like, okay. And of course, I, I didn't have to even hear it. You know, I saw you were on it. I knew it was going to have some some real funk. Okay. And so, but when I got it, I was blown away, you know, because it was like the real old school funk, funkadelic, yeah. you know, with the, the church and the gospel and the funkadelic. And, um, you know, it was like the real, the real deal from uh, like early funkadelic kind of feel. But updated, you know, a little bit. Yeah, it was, it was, that was a good album. My wife, she loves that album. She loves, she loves that one. And uh, what's the other one? I this forgot. One? Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you got them all. Yeah. So, what was it like being in the studio with those? Guy, I mean, was it recorded in, in a home studio or an actual yeah, studio? Or? In the home, in the home studio. It, it was, it was, a, it was so much fun. Cause I tell you, I tell you the schedule. The schedule. We got up, we had breakfast. We said prayer. We went to the studio to tell about. It was funny because they actually had tea time. <laughs> I didn't do that. That tea time. <laughs> they had, we had tea. We go back. It was fun because we worked all day. You know, what I'm saying it was fun. And the, the first album. From the hoods of the woods was cutting the castle. One of the old castles was old castle. And the second album, uh, the second album, I'm sorry, the second album was cut in the church. We cut that in church in the church. Out there. It was a it's a historical church where they with a uh 
the black plague, the black plague, first hit in Europe. That's the church we was re re recorded the uh, second album of. Wow, there you go. So that that's some atmosphere right there, both of those places. Right, right, yeah. No. Yeah. No, yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. I got pictures of that, all of that, yeah. Huh. Uh, mm -hmm. are, is there gonna be future P theory or what where's that at now? We talk we talk you know, we talk about it. We talk about it. what are we gonna do, man? We talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I talked talk to Alex. I thought Alex like, oh, well, he called me last night, and I was like, I hate, it was too late. But um, we talked to Alex like every other day almost. But yeah, we talking about it. We talking about it. See what happens. You know, we talking about everybody talking about anything with this pandemic going on. You know, so. but yeah. it sounds like fun. Sound like it might be a plan. It could be. Did um, did you play any shows with them? Oh yeah, man. We I did um. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did a yeah. We did um. Yeah, we did Liverpool. We, yeah, Liverpool. We, where did we go? Amsterdam. Amsterdam, Spain. Spain, where? Spain. Spain, well. Madrid, Madrid's in Spain, yeah. I did the whole Scandinavian tour. Is that what you want to call it? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I, I really liked it on Spain. I loved it Spain when we did Spain. Where else did we go? We went somewhere else. <laughs> yeah yeah we did a lot of gigging man we did a lot of gigging and then it did it made it so so funny wherever wherever country or wherever we was at alex always found a way to um it was either interviewing or uh we was in the studio everywhere we were we find a place to go cut <laughs> it was fun what what convinced you to participate in the project? I mean, you must have heard them play or something, and you were like, "Oh, they got it." I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. When they sent when and P, when they sent me the tape of their music, I was like, "I'm not going over there." They they was acid. That hard. They was playing stuff like that. I was like, "No." Then I, you know, I wanted to go. I wanted. To, I've never been on. I've been, you know, I wanted to go, so I went. Mm -hmm. It just happened when we did. We just sat down. We started playing, and just Alex was smart enough to turn the tape on, let it <laughs> let it play, and we worked. We just worked, and it worked. And it worked out because they really, really, they like the um, they re they really funky, but they like there's some real funky boys over there too. They um really like blues. They like a lot of blues, you know, and that that helped. That helped. Yeah, that helped. Cause, you know, you take blues and you speed it up a little bit, you got some really fun, something really funky going on. <laughs> yeah, funny, Kevin, because I had um, a guy from uh, the brand new heavies on recently, and I was talking to him because mostly when you look at uh, England, the UK, and over there, uh, stuff that they've done that was funky didn't really have the grit, you know, the real down dirty funk from america uh i haven't really heard that much coming out of like england you know they can get funky but not yeah. the real thick yeah. funk but yeah. p theory man they brought it yeah they they they, they funky and they, they, they got a drummer that drummer wiggles I, he he was I, his name is damon but when he walked he just he just goes like this all the time he always acts like he plans so i just named him wiggles you know he he he's a uh, um he just born funky. Well, he's just funky. He's just funky. Well, they got one another guy over there playing trombone with us named Chris Zahn. He played trombone trombone, and then if you close your eyes, you would have thought it was Fred Weston. Is that they bad? yeah some funky boys over there man don't get it twisted. <laughs> Well, God bless them, you know, I mean, over there in uh, Europe, especially in Japan, I mean, especially the past 20 years or so, they've been really helping keep funk alive. Yeah, 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 yeah that's you're right, you're right. Even Japan, I've been looking at Japan, there's some the guys over there, they can see some singing boys coming from over there. <laughs> it's it's uh, really be interesting, too, I think, Kevin, because back in maybe like the 80s and even to the 90s some, you would hear funk coming from elsewhere in the world. And it just sounded like, you know, sort of like poor imitations, right. you know? But more recently, it seems like, you know, 
they they got it. You know, they can do it for real. Yeah. They've been working at it a long time. Yeah, it took them <laughs> a couple of decades. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I got a thing. I don't know if you know it or not, but um, it's called Quasar Reloaded. Tell us about it. You heard that? Uh, um, tell us about it. Yeah, this is this is a new project that I'm working on. It's called Quasar Reloaded, and one of the singles is out now on YouTube called Tell It. So you should check it out. I what, think you like it. Will we see an album? Huh? We gonna yeah, see an album? Yeah, we're working on an album now, as we speak. Yeah. It's one called it's one called uh, one out there called Tell It, and the other one is under Watermelon Funk, and it's called Let's Dance. Yeah, that one I've heard, and I was going to ask you about Watermelon Funk, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we finished it now. I'm not going to the studio tomorrow with them. How'd you connect with those cats? Man, it's, it's, I'm not, <laughs> God is good. I put, put it like that. God is good, because they're hanging out, you know, just doing different shows, you meet different cats, and, and things happen. That's how, that's how that goes. That's how it and they and it, and it's just been like real people always coming in and out of my life, you know. Like this guy, Deshaun Alexander, is real. He's a keyboard player from the church, and that's the watermelon quote. You know what I'm saying? His guitar player, Bright, nice young kid, he came over here. We cut we cut uh, the vocals for uh, "Let's Dance" in my living room. You know, it's it's fun. I like it when it's done like that. We like, wow, it's fun. Yeah. That record, Watermelon Funk, I mean, it's got the Pedro Bell type artwork and, you know, it's really bringing right. the Funkadelic vibe. Yeah. <laughs> My man made me a t-shirt too. I don't know. Where is that? The one that did the original P-Funk artwork? Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, you've played also with, I think, uh, Evolution of Soul and Clones of Funk, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, they nice too. Cozy Funk, Funk is nice, yeah. And I did the uh, Funkateer Ball a couple of times with them too, down in DC. Yeah, which yeah. Uh, hopefully is going to happen next month. We'll yeah, see, we'll see. <laughs> the way yeah, are... yeah it, it, they said it's going, it's going down because I talked to who I talked to, not George Darden, um, Robert Wood. I talked to Robert Woods. He said it's just still going on. Uh, everyone's got their fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like going back and forth from this to fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't cross these fingers, but you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Where you at the fucking tennis ball? No, I've been wanting to go so badly and then it got postponed and I haven't been over there, but you know, um I definitely want to make it happen and maybe next month I'll see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but, call, call um, Cones of Funk, I'll tell you, when I first went down um, to do the thing with uh, Cones of Funk, I was like, oh, okay, there's another cover band doing Parliament. So I, I guess the rehearsal, and I'm sitting there, and they start playing. I tell you, if you close your eyes, if you close your eyes and remember Parliament from the 80s and 70s, these boys are bad. <laughs> they, yeah, they're bad. They're bad. Yeah, I've checked them out on YouTube and I was impressed. You know, I was expecting, like you said, you know, just sort of like, yeah, you know, like a cover thing. It's going to be like, okay, but no, it sounds pretty legit. Yeah, they, they are. They are, man. They are. They're good. Yes, sir. Their horn section is woo. Crazy. It's, it's so important when you do P Funk. Yeah, I mean, you have to have those horns, you have to have the layered vocals and the soulful yep. vocals. You can't drop like any of those things. You have to bring them all. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, through through the, through the years, through the decades, you know, are there a couple of people that have influenced you? Besides, you mentioned Sly early on, but is there anybody else? You know, like Bootsy or Prince or anybody that kind of inspired you? No, not no. Just, just I just stuck with that, like Sly, my brother, you know, and just like being a see, like me, I'm I'm in gospel a lot. There's a lot of people don't know, like oh, <laughs> the Williams brothers, Commission, all of those, all of them boys, you know, Cat and Spiritual, Mighty Clouds of Joy, 
Mm -hmm. Well, you know, from there, they, they, I like them a lot. You know what I mean? Shirley Caesar, Teresa Franklin. I'm a church boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting, yeah. too, how go gospel was so influential on funk developing, and then funk kind of like went in the background some, but it really came back up in church again, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a lot of, like even I mean you want to even go back to uh to me too, like me, Sam Cook, Al Green, you know, Joe was, yeah, this is a lot of uh Mr. Paul Morton, <laughs> Hezekiah Walker, a whole bunch of you know what I mean? Them is them is people to me. You know, George and all them, they good, they bad. But I yeah, like I said, I love the Lord, you know what I'm saying? So this is my job. This is what we do. <laughs> well you definitely brought a lot of that flavor especially to that second p theory album lyrically okay yeah oh yeah you like that too yeah excellent yeah i think that's why i think of the quasar reload the reloaded i'll tell it i think you like that enough uh, i look forward to that for sure um yeah which uh you told me about general kane what about on the other stuff you've done maybe quasar and um Anything else? Do you have a, a favorite track or two that you've been involved with? Uh, yeah, I got uh, one of my one track that I honestly truly love is like it's we recorded it, Mimuchi and Jeff, the original Quasar Eclipse that we recorded it was on the uh, Westbound album. It's called uh, "Love Is What We Came Here For." Uh, that's the one. That's the one. It's really pretty. Yep, yeah. I got it too. Okay, you don't mind? No. Feel free. Let's Go. See. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I don't know, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, Nice, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. How 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 do you describe funk? What is funk to you? Mm. That's a hard question. This is feeling make you feel good, you know. <laughs> as, 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 as it's a good make you feel good. This is true, make you, you feel funk. If you listen to a people who ever sing doing the funk, they're actually telling you the truth, telling you the story. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's my sister, so it's, it's easy. It's just... If you have to explain it too much, you don't get it probably, right? <laughs> it's definitely the feeling um but so is you know gospel too is so much the feeling mm -hmm. 
It is. It's, that's why you gotta be. It's real. That's why I mean, you can you can tell if, if when you're a musician and you don't you you're entering in and doing some funk, you can tell because it's a feeling. It's a it's a feeling. You can tell if he's real. That's why I keep saying they real. They they real. You can tell he real with it, yo. Know? Because it don't matter what you do. You clap your hand. Oh, I heard that. And you, next thing you know, you. That's a feel, yeah. It's definitely a feel. I'd like to ask everyone that comes on to to tell me their five top albums. If you could only listen to five albums for the rest of your days, what what might they be? Wow, well, man. Okay, five albums. <laughs> See how much I listen to people, right? <laughs> My top five album would probably be, man, you ain't gonna believe it now. But it'd probably be one of Ben Crosby's album. A little bit, he cool. <laughs> one of Ben Crosby. Of course, Reza, you know that. And uh, my Quasar, my brother. And the other one would be Up in the Air. <laughs> Up in the Air? I don't know that group. <laughs> no, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> Hopefully the, like air, name though, right? hopefully the air they're up in is funky at least. Huh? I said hopefully the air that they're up in is at least funky for up in air. Yeah, yeah, right, right. That's not a good, good name. What what accomplishment are you most proud of musically? The, the, the biggest accomplishment is, is doing the Quasar project with my brother. That was my biggest accomplishment. No, that's not big. Do you ever think about, or what? Where do you think Quasar might have gone, or what might have become of the group yeah, under different circumstances? No, I used to, but it, it ain't gonna happen, so I don't think about it. <laughs> I just gotta keep it real with you for real, but that's how I feel. I think we could have been a lot bigger and went, went and did a lot of things. But I'm just thankful that, thank God that we, I am where I am now. You know what I mean? You know, because if it wasn't for him, where would I be? You know what I'm saying? That we, I don't know. You know I'm, I'm just, that good enough for you, man. <laughs> well, even if, if Quasar had kept going, I mean, the music industry also changed so much in the early 80s, you know, and funk music especially got kind of, you know, pushed out by the big business of the music industry. Right, right. Right. I so. think we I think I think we would have stayed close to the uh, to the real deal. I think I think yeah quite we, we I don't know. I, I don't know. I know we would have we would hung we hung up in that. If we hadn't lost our guidance, I think we'd we'd hung up and did a lot more but a lot more things. But as you know, you know uh, the original I'm the only original original member of Quasar I live in. Because the original member was uh, me, Moochie, and Jeff. Every, you know, everybody else, like Greg Fitz, my cousin, he came in later. You know, when we started Quasar, they came in later. Patina and all of them, they came in later. But uh, Moochie and Jeff, they passed away. Moochie, Moochie passed away 15, about 15 years ago. And Jeff passed away about five. Mm. So, uh, were, were you guys, did you guys ever talk when you were, young and say you know that you hoped you'd become big stars or that kind of thing or was it just hey we want to play this yeah yeah see with, and with that with crazy like, we was we had the band we, before we was eclipsed we was called uh me Mucci, and jeff it, we, we've been we had been three pieces for years we have been um but our manager we have our manager mr brown he took us to uh, uh shea stadium i think jeff was mad, jeff might have been like 12 i know i was maybe like 14 15 and they took us over to shea stadium and we seen uh, KC and the Sunshine Band, a whole bunch of bands. And we said right then, that said we said that's what we want to do, and that's what we went after. Yeah, yeah. Because we were young, manager, they were slick. You know, they had we were young, but we were still playing clubs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One club we played, man. I was just standing there playing. Am I talking too much, though? Not at all. <laughs> Uh, I was standing there playing. We were on stage, me and Mucci were definitely on stage. And my brother Glenn, he had a picking any braids in his hair, you know, single box braids. And he had them in his hair for like maybe five, six months. And he came, this guy comes in the, in the club and he's standing in front of the stage with this huge afro. And he just looking at me, made me nervous and stuff. And when he pulled down his glasses, 
I knew it was my brother. I was like, oh, shoot. That was my first time I ever been nervous on stage. Second time I ever been nervous on stage. Yeah. Only twice, huh? Only twice, yeah. Well, of course, you know you're going to have the jitters when you come out anyway. But that, I ain't never be scared. No. But I'll tell you what, though, if you're talking about scared, <laughs> No, I ain't gonna tell us story, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I ain't gonna tell us. Did, did you guys ever, uh, in any of the groups you performed with, did you ever share the stage with somebody on the bill that kind of really impressed you or kind of really rocked the stage? Yeah, 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 a couple of groups. The main, the main group we have, what you mean when Quasar was out on tour and stuff like that? Then or any time you've been out any, any, Okay, any time. The baddest, two groups. Two groups impressed me a lot. One, first group was uh, Mother's Finest. And the second group was Midnight Star. Yeah, they was bad. Mother's Finest was the bad. Mother's Finest came to me and Jeff and Moochie and said that we, me, Moochie, and Jeff remind them so much of them three. And that was a, that was a real nice compliment. You know, the day was bad. The three of them, whew, Jesus. They were bad. <laughs> and mother's finest. That's the story I was gonna tell, but yeah, that they they wanted to they they bad. They was bad. Yeah. When when did you see them? We did when, a gig with them in Vegas. Is we this in Vegas. like in, in the seventies, eighties? When I was with General Kane. Hmm. Okay, so that was in the eighties? Yeah. Early nineties. Eighties, yeah. Way back. Yeah. yeah, actually, I've had Glenn, Glenn Murdoch's been on the show. I'm trying to get uh, Joyce to come on. Okay. Yeah, Joyce was just here last, what's the day? Tuesday? When? Tuesday? He was just here Saturday. No, Friday. He was here Friday. That's great that they're still performing. Yeah, because Saturday, we got rained out Saturday. I was supposed to do a gig in, um, in Maryland, with um, it was gonna be me, Mike Hampton, uh, Skeet, and uh, Dennis Chambers, and I forgot uh, Greg Boyer. Yeah, that that was that should have been fun, but it got rained out because of the the hurricane. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, did we leave any stone unturned, Kevin? No, I think we covered about it. How you feel? Yeah, feeling pretty good. Want to make sure that you're able to, you know, promote or share anything you might want to, you know, make people aware of too. Yeah, just said I was looking out for the Quasar Reloaded album, and it's uh, "Tell It" is the name of the song. I, I want everybody to really listen to that because it's a, a true testimony. To tell you how it's about my life, and I think that's what I say. I think you'll enjoy it, and, and it's more to come. That's for sure. And yeah, definitely. Huh? Well, I said, yeah, I said, you know, God bless you. And, and, and so glad that you're still with us and still doing it, you know. Thank you. And thank you for having me so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Truth and Rhythm. A big thank you goes out to our guest as well as to you, the viewer and listener. Also, much gratitude to Pleasure for supplying the show's funky opening and closing music. As a reminder, you can always access the complete list of linked shows by episode at funkinstuff.net. I urge you to support this program and receive the extra benefits along with that by subscribing to the Funk and Stuff channel on YouTube and sharing it with funk, R&B, and jazz lovers, joining Truth and Rhythm's membership program at Patreon, submitting a donation at funkinstuff.net, buying Everything is on the One, the first guide to funk book at Amazon, shopping at the Funky Things store, for cool merchandise at funkinstuff.net and linking through funkinstuff.net for all of your Amazon purchases. In addition, if you're an artist or anyone seeking proven results-oriented professional marketing, PR, writing, or editing consultation or production, check out the media services section at funkinstuff.net. Also, I encourage you to drop me a line at scottg at funkinstuff.net I love the feedback, suggestions, guest requests, appearance and sponsorship inquiries, and just talking about my favorite subject, groove-based music. 
For now, and as always, this is Scott Dr. GX Qualifying saying, keep on keep vibing, on vibing to the rhythm of the one.